Hello my friends, I'm Ryan Hembry and today's video is all about fossils and specifically about how they form. Chances are it's a lot different than what you thought, so stick around. The fossil record contains countless billions of creatures and many of them are remarkably preserved. And this naturally causes one to wonder just how these fossils were formed. Well, according to the standard theory presented in most museums and textbooks, it's a slow and gradual process over millions of years. As the story goes, when a creature dies, it sinks to the bottom of the ocean. Next, it's slowly buried and preserved over long periods of time. Massive rock layers slowly accumulate above it. Given the right conditions, some of these fossils turn into stone, and when those bones are exposed, usually due to erosion, we might find ourselves a fossil. While this theory is presented as factual, real-world observations through the science of taphonomy, which is the study of how dead creatures decay over time, shows that this isn't what actually happens. For one thing, if this slow and gradual story were true, then there should be millions of dead creatures on the sea floor just waiting to be buried. But that's not what we observe at all. Instead, when a creature dies, it usually floats for a few days, during which time fish pick it apart and any scraps that make it to the bottom of the sea floor are quickly finished off by marine scavengers like lobsters and shrimp. So it's lucky if the carcass lasts even a month, let alone millions of years. Also, even if there were no scavengers, soft tissue decays quickly, including the ligaments holding the bones together. So the skeleton falls apart. Furthermore, bones dissolve in seawater, so we shouldn't expect to find bones of these creatures if they've been exposed for millions of years. Even if some parts reach the ocean bottom, bone-eating worms and bacteria consume the bones. And this goes for human bones as well. In fact, human skeletons dissolve in seawater after only about 50 years. And maybe the best and spookiest example of this is the wreck of the Titanic. The Titanic sank on April 15, 1912, but as anyone who has visited the wreckage will attest, there are no human remains to be found anywhere. They do find things like boots, but there are no bodies filling those boots. Obviously, this quick decay is a huge problem for the idea that fossils form over millions of years. Furthermore, experiments with pig and crocodile carcasses have illustrated just what conditions are required for a fossil to form. The first two are that the creature must be buried rapidly and under thick sediments so that it's protected from scavengers and doesn't float. But it requires more than just rapid burial under thick sediments to preserve a fossil like this. Lots of water is also required to dissolve minerals that fill the spaces in organic tissue before the bones dissolve away and eventually turn to stone. Also, the porous sediments draw away noxious decomposition products that would turn the fossil to mush. So not only must the creature be buried quickly, but the process of fossilization had to be fairly rapid. While the secular theory clearly fails to meet these criteria, the global cataclysm of Noah's flood recorded in the Bible provided all the necessary conditions. As Dr. Jonathan Sarfati and Joel Tay explain, well-preserved fossils are a conundrum for those who believe they take millions of years to form. But they're not a problem for biblical creationists who believe that the Noahic flood approximately 4,500 years ago is the cause of most of the rock layers and strata we see today. Truly, these fossils are a testament to the global flood of Noah. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there for now, but know that there's a lot more evidence for a worldwide watery catastrophe that I could have shared, and I will share more of those evidences in future posts. But the facts of science clearly tell us that the slow and gradual process over millions of years that we've all been taught regarding fossil formation doesn't work. It's wrong. And that should cause us to wonder what else scientists are wrong about. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.